In this video, I want to talk about how to choose safe people, kind people, to build relationships with uh, when you have PTSD, uh, and also just a broader spectrum of when you feel intensely emotional or lonely, terrified, uh, you know, having flashbacks, pet, you know, things like that. So, uh, I'll tell you how I met Jenilyn, my girlfriend at this time. Um, and, uh, and what made me encouraged to uh, connect. So, um, the initial correspondence online was kind of, I had no clue, but I had an intuition and I met with her and the first thing I noticed was she was sensitive. And I didn't think it was going to connect well because it didn't seem like I was the best fit for her. But I wanted to be supportive of her as a sensitive because uh, sensitive peoples have uh, a tough time in general. And so um, I gave her some suggestions that I thought would help. And one of the ways that you can filter out people that uh, have some sort of a crisis or a mild or you know a, a mild to severe challenge such as PTSD is that they're really motivated to do something about it um, and so uh, you know and I'm, I'm I'm this way you know when I when I first heard the concept of trauma and PTSD, I was in a cafe with a young man. And before he had finished talking about why he was going to go to a workshop uh, by Stephen Levine, I had clicked on Audible, found the book, and downloaded it. Because I was desperate to learn about new paradigms that would make sense and thus allow my, my actions to be more effective in responding to some of the emotional crises I was experiencing. So the first thing I noticed was, um, and this is unusual because I offer help and support to hundreds of people and most of them don't act on it and if they do it's slow. So Jen acted on all four of my suggestions and she showed sensitivity in the email correspondence, responding promptly, uh, apologizing if there was any delay. Um, and so I made some more suggestions and I started giving supportive comments like, that's great, congratulations on doing this. I liked what you said here. And she just blossomed because this is unusual. It's, it's, where, it's why I talk in the video on kindness, about how kindness is so important. Probably a lot more important than any drug that's going to come out uh, soon. Uh, so she, uh, she was doing things. She was staying in sync. She was in complete integrity. She was exceeding my expectations. She was steering towards depth. She actually wrote a book about her traumas and abuse, tapping away on her phone in less than a month, and then sent it to me so that I could understand her. So this is sane behavior, i.e. I'm going to give you the information to help you know where I'm wounded, where I'm sensitive, what I'm feeling about that, and how to connect with me. It's incredibly intelligent, vulnerable, and rare. 
this is a safe person to connect with. Um, and of course, I reciprocate and escalate the intimacy, the vulnerability, the commitment, the dialogue. And I prioritize relationships that have this quality. And so, uh, you know, Jenlin just very rapidly uh, moved up to the top of that priority list. And, um, but there were other clues that you can look for and that I saw uh, that make someone a safe person. Jenlin saw uh, Down syndrome child who was lost in a city and she got off of the bus, told the bus to stop, talked with that child, and then made sure that that child got back home. So this is someone who is kind, who cares, who is attuned. She is understanding the capacity of the person she is engaging with. And it's coming out of her character. She's not being rewarded. And it's pretty strong in her as evidenced by the fact that she's very shy. For example, when I, when I try and get her to uh, assert herself to promote her business, she has hundreds of excuses why she doesn't want to bother this person, bother, but she will bother those people to help a Down syndrome child. And so you can see the level of commitment and loyalty to someone who needs help. Um, another clue came when she showed me photos of uh, a Down syndrome child that she had taken care of for two years. And I saw her pride, her love, and her radiance brighter in that photo than in any other photo. And uh, so I... What I took from this is that this is a woman who wants to love. And one of the great gifts of a Down syndrome child is they love and they receive love without all of the stinging pushbacks and the constant social pressure to cool that love down. It's really important to remember what cool means. It means taking all joy, all love, all excitement all beauty, all pain, all humiliation, all rage, and reducing it down to nothing, to neutral. That's cool. Emotions are warm. They're hot. They're moving. They're dimensional. They're dynamic. And um, cool is great when your paradigm is violence, let's cool it down. It's terrible when your paradigm is joy and love and connection. But the cooling process is neutral, meaning it cools everything down. Joy, love, intimacy, and terror, and panic, and violence. It's also... Uh, Cool is not medicinal for someone who is profoundly lonely or isolated. So I would suggest uh, as you look for safe people in your life, um, look to the way that they relate to diversity. Is it objective or is it so socially conditioned? So social conditioning says that whenever you meet anomaly, you slam it with a judgment and dissociate from it. That's social conditioning. What intelligent response does is it looks at the other person and based on empathy for oneself, for other people and that person, looks at how to engage, bring out the best, be kind, be supportive, that's a safe person to be with. I hope that helps. And uh, 
I'm really poor at uh, staying with any given thread for, you know, as soon as I lose it, you know, as soon as I've done with that thought or that video or that project, my mind is racing ahead and in so many different areas. And, and it makes me uh, very good if I'm with one person and we're going along that journey together. But it doesn't make me the best person to follow up all the different threads of stuff that I've got out in the world. And so I do have a real impulse to be in dialogue and to support um, around these videos, particularly someone who's in real need and not having that support in the world. Uh, however, um, just I, I turn off so many alerts so that I can stay focused on what I'm doing, the book I'm writing, etc. That I, I may not know when or who writes about what around some of this stuff. And I'm just sharing that as a little bit of meta conversation around this. And um, also apologizing if you're sharing something vulnerable and I'm not responding. I'm looking into how I can deal with that, uh, maybe creating a private forum. Um, and uh, thank you.